The development of the processing tomato industry in California's Central Valley is nothing short of a phenomenal success story that has been built on numerous innovations and technological advances. Over the past 90 years, California processing tomato yields per acre have increased over 740% and the state now accounts for over 95% of U.S. production. Nearly 20 years of UC research has shown that conservation tillage tomato systems can have a number of benefits. They reduce production costs typically from $70 to $140 per acre depending on the specific set of CT practices that are used. They reduce fuel use and dust emissions commonly by 60 to 80 percent relative to conventional systems. They can increase soil carbon and particularly when coupled with winter cover crops. And they can sustain yields compared to standard tillage systems. My name is Danny Ramis and uh, I'm with Morningstar Packing and uh, Lucero Farms. We're sitting in our, one of our processing tomato fields with subsurface drip irrigation. Minimum tillage has always been a practice. We're trying to take it a step further and really reduce the number of passes and leaving the cover crops you know, embedded in the bed and using strip till practices, pre-plant, and things of that nature to really push the limits of conservation tillage. The late 1980s witnessed the introduction of drip irrigation technology for tomato production and today over 90% of total Central Valley tomato acreage relies upon this highly efficient irrigation method. The idea behind subsurface drip irrigation is to reduce the amount of water that's evaporated from the soil surface. Tillage had to evolve to accommodate this better way to irrigate because conventional tillage was not going to work with permanent drip tape that was 10 inches deep. You know, this idea about minimum tillage, cover crops, is one of the best ideas there is to utilize the water better so the soil can hold a little bit more water. And it's one of the tools that helping me to farm with a little bit less water. We apply fertilizers and we chemigate through the tape and we have to have efficient, consistent, uniform irrigations to be able to do that. And the cover crop leaves all of our beds very loose and the water travels well. The switch from direct seeded to transplanted tomatoes has also been a major technology shift during the past decade. My name is Jeff Mitchell and I'm a Cooperative Extension Cropping System Specialist with the University of California at Davis. We're in the middle of an experimental cropping systems comparison field at one of the University of California's research and extension centers. This is pretty much the extreme of what we've been evaluating. We deliberately add cover crop residues to the system. This is essentially no-till cotton and no-till tomatoes. Uh, and and we, we add organic matter uh, into the, this kind of a system here. The tomato plants have just been transplanted a couple days ago that are in the middle of the beds. It's drip irrigated, subsurface drip. And what we're trying to do there is compare this system with another variation on the conservation agriculture theme. This is conservation tillage without a cover crop. So this is not, not worrying about a winter small grain cover crop, just direct transplanting the tomatoes in the middle of the beds here, and that's it. We haven't had any tillage here since the last cotton crop that was managed for pink bollworm compliance. These systems are essentially no-till. With the minimum tillage, and also with the help of uh, cover crops, we really improve this, this ground right here. You can grow anything you want it to grow. A lot better yields, the quality of the products uh, are better too. Setting up for conservation tillage and cover crop based tomato production means getting ready well in advance. Cover crops are drill seeded into the tops of permanent beds and allowed to grow during the late fall, early winter period, generally into February, when they reach about 18 inches tall. The cover crops are then herbicide killed and they tend to melt down onto the bed tops. The centers of beds are then strip tilled using a ground driven strip tiller, which incorporates herbicide, mixes the cover crop residue with the soil, and loosens the soil in the transplant line. Transplanting is then done with a conventional transplanter. Work is currently underway to identify the best cover crop species for these systems and to also select legume cover crops that can add fixed nitrogen to the system. We've tried to come up with a mixture of cover crops. So we have 
nitrogen fixing cover crops like this vetch right here and pea, and we also have fava beans, these are actually fixing nitrogen naturally in the soil. A number of systems considerations need to be taken into account before starting with these CT systems. Plan well ahead and have clear goals in mind before starting. Converting to CT requires entire systems changes. It is more than just inserting a piece of equipment. Minimizing tractor traffic is important. With less traffic, the long-term risk of inadvertent soil compaction is reduced with CT. Harvest efficiency and the need to avoid materials other than tomatoes from entering processing tomato loads is an issue that will require further refinement, vigilance, and possible harvesting equipment innovation. A big hurdle for growers has been the perception, how does my field look? I need to make another pass. And a lot of this conservation tillage, you really have to get over that and have the vision long-term of what the outcome is going to be. I mean, you may have to live with residue on the shoulders of the bed, but at the end of the day, the economic opportunity is definitely there. Additional information about these innovative conservation agriculture systems for tomato is available on the Conservation Agriculture Systems Innovation website.